and I turn around and she has the same dress as me. Oh my god, that is so messed up. But like, no one even likes Katie anyways. Ugh, I don't want to think about this anymore. Quarantine is totes boring. Let's hang. Okay, queen. But make sure you wear your mask and everything. See you in 15 minutes at my place, girlies. Bye, lovelies. TTYL. Muscles and swag. <sighs> if only. Has this ever happened to you? Yeah. Are you tired of feeling like a delicate baby dove waiting for its wings to be crushed under the weight of a single feather? Yes. Is your self-esteem dangerously low? Do you live in constant self-loathing? Do you overshare your problems on the internet for hundreds of people to see as a joke? Because you don't want to face your trauma? Yeah. Well, then this product is right for you. Testosterone! Muscle! Body hair! <laughs> hey man, I don't really like this flavor. What else? You want strawberry, my little dog? Well, too bad! Cause we've got strawberry! Blueberry, we've got blueberry! Mango, we've got mango! Oh, has Gatoroids changed your life? Dude, this Gatoroid thing totally works. I was such a beta before Gatoroids, and look at me now, I'm a total oliver. Look at this winner! With the help of Gatoroids, you too can achieve this super realistic bond. You want more proof? Listen to this. Well, skinny man became a jerk. And then we had to call off our entire wedding. Thanks, Gatoroids. You heard her. Thanks, 
Gatoroid. Pick up your order of Gatoroid from your local Home Depot today. Only $10.99 plus shipping and handling. Side effects include toxic masculinity, enhanced ignorance, stronger connection to your primal instinct, extremely long arm and bear, nice, curvy, partial blindness, muscle spasms, unbearable body odor, muscle atrophy, anger issues, no IQ, extreme thirst, a lifetime subscription to men's health magazine, chicken pox, loss of smell, osteoporosis, nightmares, nails falling off, mommy issues, hallucinations, vanishing fingerprints, midnight munchies, colorful urine, excessive flatulence, constipation, diarrhea, and an overwhelming desire to eat wild animals. You know, I played the chili here to die for, but I can't be that much of a big deal. Yeah, I guess you're right, but I don't even know if I want the chili. I think it might take a minute to decide what I want to get. Yeah, I get that. I just ordered us two cups of water for now, I guess. Hey, yo, can I have two cups of water here, please? Thank you. What? I just ordered water. Thank you. You know, I bet you won't put any hot sauce in your cup. What? No, I, 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 I definitely would. Just like, I thought it'd be funny if you did it first. Aw, uh, I tried to do it alone. No. Because I could do it right now without you. No, 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 I'm, I'm not afraid. I just thought you wouldn't want to suffer alone. Fine, that's one thing that. Okay, bet. Bet. Hey, can I get more hot sauce, please? What? Your spiciest bottle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Here you go. Thanks. Got milk. Hi, cutie. Ooh, good evening. Let's move on skeleton. Yes. <laughs> My turn. Yeah, yeah, my turn. Why, yes, join me! Right, let's get the starter running, <laughs> eh? Yeah! yeah. Let's go! <laughs>
Poets Corner. Reading an illustration by Baron J. L. Fournier. Good evening, and welcome to the Poets Corner. <clears throat> there once was a monkey who used to kerplunky with poo poo on the sidewalk at dawn. When people walked by, they never said hi, but held their nose tight and moved on. The poor little monkey. He felt down and sunky, for he had no nice pals or comrades to keep. So he sat on the sidewalk and wept a while. He felt like a long-tailed, lice-eating creep. And then came along the people who said, you're a hole. You leave monkey feces where we need to get by. The monk's heart was hurt. He was down in the dirt. So they had to admonish and press him to cry. In an act of wise humor, or so goes the rumor, the simian brandished his favorite fruit. He peeled off the peel, then ate the whole deal and hopped down the street in his birthday suit. Thank you for visiting the Poet's Corner. Yesterday, what I know, did yesterday? Like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Please amuse yourself. You guys? Hello? Are you muted? Yes. Sorry. You guys know I can't work my computer. You teenagers are so savvy. So, um, how come I'm only seeing your forehead, Mr. Jason M? How do I activate the sharing the screen button? Is there somebody in the waiting room? You guys, how do I activate the waiting room? No, it's a Hamilton cosplayer. Zero, 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 zero. My name is Hamilton. Stop, 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 please stop. No, no, stop. <laughs> you have to do this every single time he's mentioned. Every every time I mention? Not you. The real Alexander Hamilton. Okay. <clears throat> My fellow patriots, who is prepared to learn about America's greatest triumphs? The highs, the lows, our greatest victories, our greatest defeats. Please rise with me as we praise this holy country. Dude, the presentation was like a week ago. Let it go. Kids, hello. I, I hope I didn't miss anything. So what did I, what did I miss? What did I, what did I, I miss? I will now mute you all. Are you all muted? Okay. If you look online at the online Google Classroom on Google, you will see the PowerPoint. We will focus on the Federalist Papers. This is the last chapter in this unit, so pay attention. There will be a quiz at the end of class. Alexander? Hello? Alexander, you are on mute. The class cannot hear the words coming out of your mouth. Voila, madam. I have written those, those very papers just a few years ago. I am sure you will be quite impressed with my work. Okay, Alexander, quite the passionate history student you've become. So, kids, who remembers the Federalist Papers from back in eighth grade? Wasn't that just the Declaration of Independence? Oh yeah, and they were like, uh, written in 1945. Yes, Alexander? My fellow peers, I am absolutely flabbergasted at the display of idiocy right here in this very schoolroom. The Federalist Papers were written to support the United States Constitution. Fun fact, they were written by one John Jay, one James Madison, and me. Mostly me. Um, actually, I was about to say- And- <laughs> It was written in 1787, 
1787. I can't believe these are America's future leaders. They are. Okay, you know what? I will be putting you guys in the breakout rooms for the quiz. Don't cheat, please. Put your phones in your bags. Don't look at your papers. Don't look anywhere else or do. I don't care. Brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, men, women, friends, enemies. Despite your considerably low intelligences, we will rise up to this occasion. Please do not throw away your one shot. Let us begin this venture onto the depths of greater knowledge. What year were the... No problem. Who wrote them? <laughs> how easy these questions are. This proves that my brain is now, how you say, top-notch. What? Wow. My instructor really made a fool out of me. I had believed beyond a shadow of doubt that she was teaching a history class, but evidently she was teaching a course on dramatic writing. Sober Dan here. Ever heard of a new criminal sensation that's been sweeping the nation? It's called crime. With crime, anything is possible. Ever wanted to buy something but you ran out of money? Try crime. That stinky IRS always keeping you down? Crime. Have you ever strongly disliked your guidance counselor? Crime. 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 Triple crime. Try crime today. Remember, it's not legal. Your friendly neighborhood coffee shop is always there for your coffee needs. They serve delicious uh, loose tea and they have the best smoothies in town, and much, much more. Wanna go back in time? The Ugly Mock will take you there. Thank you, Burbank. Welcome back to the 
the show. The crust is now ready, fresh out of the oven. And now we'll move on to the filling. Mom, will you pass me the meat? Well, I've never seen this. What kind of meat are you using? Well, let's just say it's exotic meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rose, always bringing the humor. Mince meat pie can be enjoyed by the entire family. Rose, I know your husband can't get enough of it. Oh, well, he loves it so much. Uh, it's almost like it's a part of him. Come back after this quick commercial to learn how to make mince meat pie filling. So, how's my dear son treating you? Everything's fine. Rose, you can't expect him to be perfect. Well, perfection's hardly what he gives me, but every couple has their obstacles, I guess. Bob's better than most. You learn through marriage that a woman should never provoke her husband. There are providers who need to be appreciative of that, Rose. Yes, of course. He does love you, though. A mother can tell. I just wish he at least liked my makeup. My Roger never liked my makeup either. As you guys grow older, he'll eventually stop mentioning it. Hopefully. Boys will be boys. I have a feeling I won't have to worry about that again. We're back on air in 15, everyone. Oh, Rose, honey, you missed a spot. Oh, shoot. Welcome back, chefs, to Cooking with Rose and Deborah, the mother-daughter cooking duo. Let's finish our mince meat pie. Set aside your chopped ingredients so we can focus on this meat, this exotic meat. You're going to want to make sure that your meat has been defrosted for at least two hours before you begin your pie. And remember, a good dinner for your husband is a housewife's greatest goal. Aww. But remember, ladies, a good dinner won't stop him from giving you a shiner. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't buy a meat pre ground, you're gonna to wanna to take out your meat grinder and get grinding. My, this meat is um tender. Rose, where did you say this meat was from? Oh, Falon Jay's from the deep Caribbean South. Told you it was exotic, but don't worry, he's very tender. We'll be back in 15 minutes to show you the finished pie. Well, even the prettiest roses have their thorns. All right, we made good progress today, Henry. See you next week. Okay, Devin? Okay, Devin, how are you? What's brought you to my office today? You've seen what I look like, right? Y yes Devin, I've seen what you look like. What the hell? Can you elaborate on what emotions you're feeling? No, seriously! What am I? Alright, calm down. No! You calm down! Have you any idea how all the other animals look at me? I'm a laughing stock. How am I supposed to tell my kids that they're mammals and they lay eggs? I got a duck bill, a beaver tail, and a coat of fur. Am I some sick joke? I'll see myself out. So, how long have you two been together? Oh gosh, mm, a very long time, almost seems like an eternity, met at the race. Four. And honestly, I think it's kind of hard to put a date on when we first started to feel a connection between the two of us. Forty years. I mean, of course, there's that race, which I, of course, could have won, but I just wanted to let my sweetheart win after the race we were. Well, okay, how about just one person talks at a time? Oh, perfect. I was just talking. We were... 40 years. 
All right, Jerry, just take some deep breaths with me. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Wow, that must have been really hard on you. Oh, you don't have to get political. You're gonna run for president? Well, I'm not saying I wouldn't vote for you. Look, Jerry, you're a goldfish. Besides, I thought we already had an orange president. All right, Jerry, see you next week. My family disowned me. I'm an atheist. Why can't you just answer a question as it's asked? You never give a straightforward answer. Why can't you just be direct? And why is it always about that dang race? It was forever ago. Just get over it. I won the race and you got overconfident and you lost. I want a divorce. And I want a divorce! Ha! Huh. I beat you! I finally beat you! How do you feel about that? It wasn't me. It was not me. It wasn't. Thanks, Doc. See you next week. See you later, Ellie. Gator. Oh, stop, you're crying. I know alligator tears when I see them. Uh, ah. uh, I hate you. As he walked into Best Buy, the security guards kept a close watch on him, but he knew what he had to do. You can't stop true love! I think we lost him. It's just you and me now, baby. Did she say yes? Well, of course I did. How could I say no? My name is Christina Aiden Johansson. I was born and raised in Burbank, California. I go to Burbank High School, and my strange addiction is having a consistent and healthy sleep schedule. I'm honestly fine with sleeping at consistent times every day. My daily activities remain unhindered because of this so-called bad habit. I really don't see the problem at all. I don't know why my family is complaining. It's not even harming them. I go to bed at 9 p.m. and wake up at 5 a.m. Perfect eight hours. Christina. Christina's addiction is in every way tearing our family apart. 
Can't you just stay awake for one more hour, Buggeroo? Why can't you just respect my choices? Because your choices are taking away from time that should be spent with family. I spend my whole day with you guys. I need to sleep. Just, just one more game. I need my perfect eight hours. No, you don't. You, you have school tomorrow. Well, yeah. That's why I have to go to bed. What do you not understand about that? What I don't understand about it is that you don't spend any quality time with your family. Christina sleeps for eight hours a day. That's four times more than the average elephant when sleeping in the wild. I also sleep to escape reality earlier. As you can see, my household is pretty toxic. The only person I can really talk to is my sister, Carly. She's always there for me when I need her. And she's always so happy to help me sort out my issues. Hey, so something happened. What? Well, I had some more issues with everyone today. So, I was walking back home when Mom called. I thought this would be fine, because she usually calls to tell us about dinner. But this time, she said that we were having a later dinner, because she and Dad had some errands to run. I told her I couldn't have a late night dinner, because it interferes with my sleep schedule. And then, she started to yell at me. My friends were there too, and had begun to laugh, and they just chortled and let it happen, you know? Sorry, I was visualizing. That's bad, I guess. I don't know where she gets the energy after school to just act like this. It's honestly really annoying. Well, thanks. Oh, and also, by the way, later that week, our producers got on a call with two of Christina's friends to see their perspective on the matter. I'm really concerned about Chris. <laughs> yeah, I agree, because she could just be out on a hike and her family would just leave her when the time comes. It's like the concert beat. <laughs> she doesn't really have a choice. In our sleepovers, we'd have this tradition where we prank the first person who fell asleep. Loki was kind of sad because we wanted to prank someone else. So we just leave her out of it because it wasn't fair. Yeah, then again, uh, she kind of deserves that. Because uh, she's always running around saying how good the, her grades are. And she legitimately belittles us with her perfect eight hours of sleep. Um... That's... her addiction. My friends and family really seem to be concerned about me. I know it isn't a bad thing at all, but... I don't want my relationship with them to be ruined because of my sleep schedule. I've considered the doctor's suggestion, and I'm going to take intense mental and physical therapy. After much consideration, Christina and her family had begun to undergo rather intense therapeutic sessions. After the first couple of years of enduring the most effective and calming type of therapy any creature can experience, you may be wondering, where are they now? Well, the knowledge of the answer will be spread immediately and eminently as we are now back with Christina Aiden Johannesson after long years of going through the process of rehabilitation. I 
I've never been more grateful for my friends and family looking out for me. They've put hours into helping me cure my addiction and their commitment is outstanding. I am always awake now. I can do the things I love to do, like spending time with my lovely and caring family. We have fun at the family dinner table, talk about our days and play so many games. I also hang out with my friends 24 seven and I can be the one pranking them now. <laughs> oh, I just love all my friends and family so much. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. Another addiction has been overcome. Join us next time on My Strange Addiction to see how other behaviors will be dealt with. Close your eyes, shut your mouth, dream a dream and get us out. Dream, 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 dream. Hit the headache, fast asleep, dream a dream and little peep. Dream, 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 dream. Hey, you there! Do you want to go outside and give that person you love a big ol' hug? Yeah. Do you want the company of your friends and family that you haven't seen in over half a year? Yeah. Are you obsessed with the writer and actor Danny DeVito? Yes! Well, we can't help you with the last one, oh. but we can help you with the others, and many more! Introducing the Robot Sid. Wow! What is it? The Sid is a robot designed to act like a human and comfort people who are lonely and in their homes all day. With many abilities, the Sid is under your full control. Having trouble with your math homework? Well, tell Sid to help and it'll calculate and show you the answer and how to do it. Wow, that's amazing! What else can it do? The Sid is customizable and can sound like anybody and anything you want. No way! Evolution is the process where living organisms change over time. We both evolve and devolve. <laughs> what else can it do? With a couple extra dollars, you'll also receive a port that when plugged into Sid and your phone, you'll have Sid talk and sound like the person you're talking to on the phone, making it seem like they're right next to you. For just the small price of $32,000, you'll be able to buy yourself a Sid. Only $32,000? That's right, only $32,000. Sid can be found at your local stores and can be ordered online at www.buysidtoday.com. Once again, at www.buysidtoday.com. Go. Where's my keys? Where's my car? here. We are discussing a celebrity who is rumored to have drop kicked a baby. Our goal for today is to find out what really happened during the incident at the scene of the alleged crime. Today on the Late Afternoon Show with me, Claire Falls, we will be talking with the actor, singer, and aspiring football player. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Chad Banks. 
Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Hello, hello. Hey, thank you. Thank you. All right. Hey, thank you. Much appreciated. Welcome, Mr. Banks. Well, hello, Claire Falls. It's, uh, it's great to be here this afternoon. That's great to hear from you. Now, shall we get started? I mean, yeah, sure, as long as the cameras are on me. <laughs> well, not for the entirety of the episode. Now, let's get started. Did you kick the baby? No. What was your reason for kicking the baby? All right, listen, I didn't, I didn't kick, kicked any babies, okay? The only thing I kick is a football in the other team's butt, all right? Chad Banks, you are rumored to have kicked a baby. Everywhere, people are asking you and you kept on denying it. Well, I'm denying it because it's not true. Oh, really? There's one person out there who has witnessed and submitted proof of the event and it has gotten major attention on the internet, and you've received major backlash from it. Okay, listen. Click. I, I haven't kicked anything, all right? I mean, now that I think about it, I actually ended up kicking the habit a couple years ago. You know, back in middle school, I used to be a serious gum chewer, Claire. I was chewing everything. Five gum, wintergreen extra. The public red... deserves to know the truth, Chad Banks. Roll the clip. Is that Chad Banks? You see how it's looking at me? It's bro. What's yeah. happening Look. here? Do you see it? It's just like Look. They're yelling. What? What? Wait, Chad Banks! Chad Banks! Stop! Why did you kick the baby? Wait, hold on! Stop! Alright, alright, listen, listen, okay? The baby, I'm I I'm toddler! The toddler was looking at me, plotting my demise, okay? I could see it in its Mr. eyes. Mr. Banks, why are you having such a violent reaction to something you did? You're acting insane. I'm not acting insane. You're acting insane. Everyone is acting insane. You, you guys are out to get me. I mean, you guys always blame the victim for everything. You never let the bully get what they deserve. Mr. Banks, please restrain yourself. I... <sighs> You know, if you were a toddler, I'd kick you too. Baby. <laughs> toddler! <laughs> Hi. For those of you who don't know, I have received a ton of backlash for what I've done this previous month, which is punting at punting a toddler. I'd like to apologize to Claire Falls for being so disrespectful and Lastly, I want to apologize to my fans who have lost both their faith and their admiration in me. I'm so sorry, and it will never happen again. Thank you. Are we done? What are you looking at? My name is Earl, and, and welcome, welcome to VHS TV. Today's top headliner, underground cookie dealing. Today's teens don't get the same rush they used to on um, conventional methods. 
So they have resorted to the sugary high of Snickers. That's oil. right, Earl. Witnesses have posted videos of the trades happening all over Burbank. Speaking of the epic highs and lows of high school, sports tryouts are beginning soon. Do you want to participate in this coming sports season? Well, try out for the newly improved Wii Sports BHS teams. Sorry to all the people wanting to play football or basketball, BHS is only offering tennis, baseball, bowling, golf, and boxing. Now we have BHS principal, Dr. Crowther, here to extend his thanks to BHS students. Dr. Crowther? Burbank High School Bulldogs, our campus has been squeaky clean for the last eight months. I would like to personally thank you, as would our custodial crew, teachers, and amazing admin team for your new commitment to cleanliness. Thank you, Dr. Crowther. Very cool. All right, Spirit Week is next week, students. Here's the lineup. Monday is pajama day. Show up to school in your pajamas. What's new? <laughs> Tuesday is dress up as your favorite currency day. Wednesday is dress up as Sheila, who cheated on you last week. Call me back, please. Thursday is... No, it, please. Thursday is dress up as your favorite short single mom. I know I have mine. And Friday is dress up as the last person who gaslit you day. Show your spirit this week, Bulldogs. And now, our reporter Rico on the Travis Scott Burger phenomenon. Thank you, Earl. We are here in line to get the Travis Scott Burger to see what all the hype is about. You have the most Okay, so here we have the burger. Its contents include a patty with cheese, bacon, lettuce, onions, pickles, ketchup, and mustard, plus fries, barbecue dipping sauce, and the Sprite. Let's see what our fellow Burbankians have to say about this new meal. Excuse me, civilian. What do you have to say about this highly acclaimed Travis Scott burger? It is the only thing I've been eating for the past three weeks. My, my doctor keeps phoning me and begging me to eat fruits and veggies because it will drastically change my health and standard of something. But then I saw him getting one and I was like, you know what, Dr. Hypocrite? You are fired! Okay, but what do you specifically like about the meal? I think it's remarkable that someone like Mr. Scott is doing something like this for the common folk. I heard he blesses every meal before wrapping it up and giving it to the customer. Such a charitable soul. Okay, well, thank you for that very enthusiastic input. Now we have a very exclusive interview with McDonald's executive. So I've been chatting to some to some guys up in the corporate. You know, I've been talking to them, and I came up with some new celebrity meals ideas. You know what? I think you'll like them. Really? Well, let's hear some. Well, we got the Danny DeVito meal, we got the Judge Judy meal, Rebecca Black, Grant Mac, of course, the Dr. Phil Double Decker meal, and finally, Barry B. Benson kids meal. Well, I'm excited to try them all. Ah, excuse me, my fine elder. What do you think about this new Travis Scott movie? What? As you can see, everybody is very eager to try out this new dish. Back to you, Earl. Sheila, baby, just listen to me, please. I... Thank you, Rico. And now we have our popular influencer, Felix, at the desk. What have you come to talk about with us today, Felix? Every day I wake up and check Facebook. And the first thing I see every single morning is a minion. When I tell you I'm frustrated, 
I'm frustrated. Minions are taking over the world and everybody's just allowing it to happen. Everywhere I turn, I just see minions <laughs> plastered all over the place. Minions are billionaires. Not even real people, but they have billions of dollars. They make 194,000 times more money than I do. Minions are in your foods, in your clothes, in your furniture. They're everywhere. They brainwash so many mothers to post a stupid joke with a minion on the side. I don't need a minion telling me about your french fry diet. I don't need a minion telling me that my parents are going to get a divorce. And I certainly don't need a minion as a news source. Why are they so loved? They're a bunch of tiny nuisances created by a middle-aged man creating characters for a children's movie. Papel. In conclusion, mm -hmm. minions are terrible. And if you like them, so are you. Felix, for that passionate speech, now we have our reporter Frankie, who's on the scene with some of Burbank's fantastic pets. Frankie? Billy, I'm here in Burbank waiting to interview this captivating canine. So tell me, how do you feel about your owner being home all the time? It is phenomenal. It is literally always playtime. No more paying visits to that bloody vet. I am in bona fide doggy heaven right now, brov. Now let's get the feline perspective. Tell me, how do you feel about your owner being home all the time? Father is always around. It's blasphemy. I haven't torn up a piece of furniture in weeks, for Father insists on keeping me at bay. Soon, when Father leaves the house for simple human errands, the beast within will be unleashed! And you, Goldfish, how would you say the current social climate has been affected by quarantine? And what recourse could be enacted to most effectively return society as a whole to normal? Gulp. And you, mealworms, how do you feel about your owner being home all the time? Owner is king! Owner is king! Owner is king! Owner is king! Owner is king. Okay, Bulldogs, that's it for today's BHS TV video announcements. On behalf of the cast and crew of BHS TV, we thank you for watching. And always remember to wash behind your ears. January 31st, what started as a mystery virus last month in Wuhan, China, has now killed more than 250 people and affected thousands more around the world. March 14th, Burbank Unified School District's schools shut down. March 13th, 26-year-old Brianna Taylor was shot dead inside her home by Louisville April Metro 15th, Police officers. April 15th, a man is arrested in Boston for attempted arson of a Jewish-sponsored assisted living residential facility. Nearly 3 billion animals were killed or displaced by Australia's devastating bushfires. August 4th, fires the Beirut port blast State killed more than 178 people, left more than 6,500 injured. Ten accused of fatal shooting during Kenosha protests arrested in Illinois. August 19th, 
an assault and robbery on three transgender women was deemed as a hate crime by September the LAPD. 30th. During the first presidential debate between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden, Trump refuses to condemn white supremacist group the Proud Boys. The United States is closing in on 7 million COVID-19 September 24th, a video surfaced of a Seattle police officer appearing to roll over a protester's head with October his October 4th. Armenia's leader makes plea to U.S. as conflict October rages 9th, with Azerbaijan. Armenia, Azerbaijan conflict straw and November 7th, committee. Kamala Harris becomes America's first black and South Asian woman elected for vice president.